Ryan, you can also stand. Hare Krishna Advai. How is everything going on? Are you sleeping after coming from the school? Yeah. That's what your mama was saying me. I cannot stay here because my swimming class is also today. My, my swimming class is in the same time in Damodra class. Oh, which which day you have swimming classes? Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. Monday. Oh, Monday and Thursday you have swimming classes, so you will not be there, okay? Today is Monday. You did not go to swim class? Yeah, I will go right now. <laughs> Oh, you will go right now. Mataji, he's confused. He has swimming classes after the class, like 6.30. After the, okay, after the class. Okay, very good, very good. So, Mataji, you are the one who messaged that Advait was Advai was sleeping after after coming from the school, yes, right? Yes, yes. So, now he's yeah. getting stable. Yeah, I understand. I'm seeing okay. him class in the classes, yes. Yes. Because now I, if all the parents message me, I get sometimes mixed up with the names. I know. So, I know. I'm like talking to right person. I wanted to know, mm -hmm. yes. Initially, one, two weeks, he was like crazy sleeping. He was very tired. But now he's getting used to this time. time. Yeah, because he's, huh. he's coming and sleep. If he sleeps after coming from the school, he will not sleep early in the night. Nice. So then again, every day, it's a routine for them. So if yes. you don't make them sleep after coming from the school, then night he will sleep by 8 o'clock or 7.30. He will ha, go. Ha. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. That way, it's good for him. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Mataji. Nice. So, kids, you can start uh, chanting like 21 times. Everybody can chant Hare Krishna. 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 Hare
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yes, it's already eight minutes. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Yeah, she'll come. Nice, 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 Can you also come on the video and chant Hare Krishna for me? Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 ಹರೇ <laughs> Hare Krishna 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 ಮೌತ್ <laughs> 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 Ryan has become a big boy. You look big today, Ryan. I'm about to be nine soon, so that's why. That's why, right, right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we will share. I'm sorry it got late for me to join the class. Okay, everybody can see this slide? Mataji. Yes. yes okay <clears throat> so we are yes 
<laughs> with prava which we are learning we are nearly at the end of the we are end of the chapter okay and so in ओके सो द चैप्टर विच वी आर on is that madhav devahuti she is talking to or uh, kapil dev who is also incarnation of the lord is instructing or is um, you know he is instructing mother devahuti about how to go ahead in the path of bhakti he is instructing mother devahuti on path of bhakti so after this i think after this tomorrow you will be starting with canto 4 so this will be the last chapter of canto 3 so in our uh, shrimad bhagavatam tomorrow you will start with canto 4 a uh, chapter okay Can, canto 4 now over here in this slide which is the story which you uh, could i say matri could i say yes ryan What is the story? Is 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 Bharat and Maharaj, and the and the other one is is Jara Bharat. Okay, very nice. So in this story over here, instead of going with the whole story, I've just put up the pictures here, which tells us about uh about King Bharat. Are yes. we going to are we going to do the story of Bharat Maharaj? No, no, today no, 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 not okay. the whole story about Bharat Maharaj. but we are going to see what essence it is about okay or what does it teach us about now over here bharat maharaj he he left everything came into the jungle then he got attached to a deer and then he started every doing everything all his chores started revolving around the deer and one fine day when he was about to leave his body he kept on thinking about the deer and what happened is whatever he was thinking about on basis of that he got his next life also as a deer okay so what do you understand from this what do we what do we get an idea about this mata ji can i say mata ji yes mata ji so we should not like like we should not have pets or something cuz sometimes you get attracted to pets a lot and mata ji you should not um you should not get attracted to things so much you should just say hi hello just leave it alone don't don't get attracted to things so much just attached. just attached or don't, attracted yeah don't get attached not attracted mata ji could i say yes okay uh yes uh, ran So, like, what should we? It was but a mother shouldn't do in the first place is he shouldn't have have been like a like, that much attached. He could just like like just say hi or something to like that and like, compare like to Balavin Balavinda. But he couldn't have just like he just is say hi okay. and just and do his stuff, do his normal stuff. Um, but instead okay. he just but instead he just do the thing with the deer, not just. Uh, he he can't okay. interact with both of them, so like he's doing the deer stuff. Okay, so the one thing which oh, these all things are true, but the the main important thing over here is that the jiva when it trans when it trans wait let me have the uh, yeah see this picture over here the jiva's transmigration that means when we leave this body and come back into your next life. it mainly again depends upon what mood you were or what were you thinking about at the end of your life right remember that's the reason you say that whenever you are leaving your body at least think about the lord that means you can go back to the lord right over here what happened was the bharat maharaj was thinking about the deer and therefore he took the birth of a deer I, over here remember see over here now when he was in the deer body because of his all past karmas because of his all positive karmas he was very fortunate to know that okay i was doing so and so things in my earlier life i was just so 
very close to get liberated from this body. But I got engaged, I got attached to this deer and I took care of it. It's not wrong to take care of animals. It's good because they are also jivas. So it's good to take care of them. But he got unnecessarily attached to the deer and left all his chores which he was doing, left all his bhakti which he was doing. And that is the reason at the end, what happened? He was, uh, he felt that ah, it is me who am taking care of the deer. But it was not him who was taking care of the deer. Every, see, whatever life has come onto this, uh, onto this planet, it's all, it's, everything is destined by Lord. So once we come to the understanding that I am taking care of it, if I go away, what will happen? If that comes away, then you start getting engaged in this birth and death cycle. Right? So this, he was very fortunate that in this dear life cycle, dear life, he could know that what was hap what he had done earlier and he wanted to rectify it. And what happened? In the next life, he got the, he took the, uh, in this dear life, what happened? He went to the forest where the, all the Rishi Munis were doing the chanting, were listening to the, were doing Katha. So he listened to all those uh, uh, the glories of the holy name and then with that again he got the life of a uh, human life again and then he became Jadavarata. Now again Jadavarata is what? Jadavarata, in this Jadavarata life what did he do? Did he say oh I have all the knowledge in the world let me give it to everyone. He did not want to make the same mistakes again and again. He did not want to uh, get entangled into this again good karma, again bad karma and all these things. And he pretended to be a jada. Jada is what? A very um, like a manda buddhi or he, he wanted to be a very person with no, no intelligence, nothing. He does not understand anything. So if he does not understand anything, he will not say anything. If he does not say anything, there will be no reactions, anything. And then he just wanted to live his life, complete his karma and then go. Okay. So this was what he applied into this life. And at that, at one point when he, uh, when he gives the palanquin and all this is the big story. But what was the main essence over here is that whatever you are thinking about at the time of your death or whatever karmas you have performed in your life, according to that, you will be transmigrating from one life to another. Okay. So this was the one first understanding which is there into the book is that when you are doing your bhakti, it is very, very essential that you are, you know, you are getting good karmas and then using, and what happens when you get the good karma? Can somebody tell me? Like, I have all good karmas, then what will happen? What will happen if I have all good karmas? Nobody? To higher karma. Uh, uh, who else is there? Ryan. Um, Ryan was there. Adve, Janvi. What so, like, Mataji, what Jadabharat teaches us at, like, at the end of the, the Jadabharat story is that you should not, like, focus. You shouldn't focus on, like, like, like animals and all that kind of stuff. Just, and you have to, like, like, if focus on Krishna, then only you can like go to him at like the next verse. Just like how Jada, like how Bharat do. Yeah. Yeah. So when he mean, like with a deer. Yes. What happened to our other friends? Uh, Isha? I don't see you all. Isha, can you read this for us? In this world of inbound with proper vision, reason, detachment, and devotional service, one should move about in about in, in the, the world, world of Maya without attachment. attachment. Okay, so once you get attached to something, then it becomes very hard for you to leave that and go away, okay? There's then some questions which I have over here. We'll go at the end, okay? So as we go ahead, 
Okay, some people work with attachment and some people with detachment and attain different temporary destinations. Remember what I told you that, okay, I have good karmas. What about that? I just cannot leave anything. So what happens is, whatever you do, okay, whatever good thing you do, bad thing you, you should avoid to do bad thing. But if it happens, we have to offer everything to the Lord, right? Otherwise, what happens is, okay, we have done good things. We are very nice. So what will happen? Because of your good karma, because of your good things which you have accumulated, you will get a higher destination. But what about the time limit that you're going to be there? It is just like you have a bank of goodies. You are going to eat those goodies. How long? They are not going to be there with you for lifelong, right? As long as you have those goodies with you, you are going to be okay. But once those goodies are finished, then what? It's the same thing with your good karmas. You have good karmas, it's okay. But then with that good karmas, you go to a higher destination, right? To a heavenly planet you will go. But once all the good karmas are finished, you will be again dumped back into this material world. So our main destination has to be attaining the lotus feet of the Lord. Okay. And for that, bhakti is the best way. Okay. One who acts in bhakti by hearing and chanting about Krishna attains him easily. Okay. It is compared to over here. See, over here, what do you see? Advai, what do you see in this picture? Can you unmute and answer Adve? Haribol Adve, can you hear me? Mataji, could I say it? One second, we want everybody to speak. Adve, what do you see in this picture? Bolo, what do you see in the picture? A girl. Huh? A girl. Okay, a boy, a girl, a child. Hmm. What do you feel? What's happening in this picture? A child is lost, I think. Very good. Child is lost. Oh, absolutely. A child is lost. And in the second picture? Somebody somebody doesn't know how to read. Okay. He's trying to find out something. And the third picture? He's crying. He's crying, crying and lost. Him. Crying and lost. And this child? He doesn't know what she has to do. Very good, very good, very nice. Very nice. very nice. When one second, Ryan, let me complete this and then we'll have okay. So, this is exactly our position. Okay, in this world, when we do not know about the Lord, when you're not chanting the holy names of the Lord, or when we do not know what our eternal status is, we do not know where to go, right? And then we have everything, but we are not able to understand how to read it. We have the scriptures with us. It's not that somebody is going to come and write the scriptures for us. The scriptures are written, but we do not know what to do with it. And then we feel lost. Then we feel, oh, I do not know what to do. And that is when a pure devotee comes into your life and then they tell you, okay, this is the path of your Krishna consciousness. This is the path of your bhakti and you have to follow it. Okay, so this is exactly our situation in this world that we are not able to understand which way to go, where to go, what to do, right? And that is the reason bhakti is very, very important, okay? Uh, Adya, are you there? Yes, Mataji. Can you read this, please? Uh, yes. Bhakti is the best spiritual path and realizing Bhagwan Krishna is the ultimate realization of absolute truth. Very good. See, so Bhakti is the absolute path and only through that we can move ahead. Okay. Okay. Now... Over here, which is this story? Uh, Janavi, are you there? Haribol Janavi, are you there? Mataji, I know the story. Yeah, so we, yeah, we know the story. So over here, it's about the cobbler, the Brahmin and, uh, and Nayada, right? 
right? We are not going into the story, but what was the essence of the story, we'll see, okay? Now, is it anywhere written that, okay, if it is a Brahmana, only he or she will attain the lotus feet of the Lord? Is it, does the Lord have any preferences like this? No. No. Is it like, okay, if it's a rich person and if a person can offer ap opulent bhoga or do so, like a uh, very opulent puja and so only then will the Lord show uh, give darshan to that person? No. No, right? So in this way over here, a cobbler who understood, who had total such uh, surrender to the Lord, he knew that, okay, for my Lord... There was a uh, the the story goes in such a ways that uh, that Lord um, tells Narada to ask the cobbler and the Brahmana one simple question and according to the answer which they were going to give it would be decide it would be understood that who, which person is going to come to Vaikuntha and after how many years so the Brahmin when he was asked about that uh, what was the Lord doing when Narada went to visit him. Narada told him that, oh, you know, when I went to visit the Lord, the Lord was, uh, he was insert, he was putting an elephant through the needle of, through the hole of a needle. And then the Brahmana was very, very upset. He said, oh, Narada, why are you lying? What, what do you think? How, how will needle, how will an elephant go through a hole of a needle, through an eye of a needle? The same thing when was told to a cobbler, the cobbler was so happy. He started, wow, it's my Lord who can only do that. Nobody else can do that. And then Arada asks him, what do you think? that? Uh, do you believe that the Lord Vishnu was really, uh, he was having, he was putting a elephant through the eye of a needle? And then the answer which the Brahmana gives was really eye-opener for Narada. He said, oh, absolutely. Do you see the, all the trees over here? Do you see, you see the huge trees over here? These trees the uh, these trees have so many fruits they have so many seeds this huge tree has come only because of my lord so if my lord can send such a huge tree from such a small seed can a huge elephant not enter through the hole of a needle through an eye of a needle anything is possible for my lord and that was the level of surrender which the brahmana had so this was the lesson over here which is said that um, Raya Prahlad, can you read this for us, please? Yes, Mataji. The power of Krishna's names can elevate even the lowest of the mankind to the highest spiritual position. Right? So, this is what is the power of the holy names of the Lord. So, Kapil Dev, he had instructed uh, Devahuti, Mother Devahuti and to praise the Lord, to chant the holy names of the Lord and then and that this was the all the instructions which Mother Devahuti had received from uh, Kapil Muni. Okay? And then the Mother Devahuti, she understood what was the essence of her life, what was the importance of her life, what she had to do because what happened was she was very depressed like where, uh, when Kardava Muni left, she was she did not know what to do and then uh, Kapil Muni Kapil Dev, he uh, gave her all the uh, knowledge of the Vedas. He under made her understand what is the power of bhakti. And then Mother Devahuti, she engaged in bhakti according to the instructions which were gave by, uh, by her son, that is Kapil Dev. And then with this, we end the third canto. Okay, the fourth canto will start with Lord Shiva and all the stories. And I like, I would, uh, wait, uh, let me stop this first. I want everyone to come on video if it is possible. Can we all come on video? Madhaji. Yeah. Haribol? Yeah. Ryan, do you have something to say? No, Madhaji, I just left it on. Okay, okay. No worries. Okay. Okay, so this is the... Canto 3. Now, Canto 4, we will be next, next like tomorrow onwards, we'll go with Canto 4. Anybody had any questions regarding Bhakti? What do I do? How many rounds do I chant? How many rounds are we chanting? 6, 7, 8, 10. At least seven. one. Did we start from at least seven. one? Seven. Oh. Raya Prahlad and Raga, is it? 
Mataji, we do like three, four, five rounds of video. Okay, very good. Like slowly and steadily when you go into bhakti, slowly and steadily you can start. It's not like, okay, I have a big number, so I'm a good devotee. I have a less number, so I'm a less uh, not good qualified devotee. Do it according to your play, pace, according to what you are, according to your studies, your time. But see to it that you are giving your time to read the scriptures, to hear, to chant, okay? At least one page from each scripture, if you can, one book you can read every day, slowly you can increase your reading, okay? Why am I telling you this is because we are on Canto 4 now. So in between, whenever you find time, see to it that if you can read anything related to the Bhagavatam or at least hear to the stories from Bhagavatam, and the very important thing, if you could not miss the classes, I know you all are attending, but I think we are today. There are a few more missing, huh, Mataji? Yeah, Mataji, Palvi usually joins regularly. He is missing. And rest are like, you know, they come one day, they don't come other day. Mm -hmm. But Palvi is the one who is the regular kid who is missing now. I think okay. he's uh, like yesterday there was a boat festival in Dallas, where Dallas. Maybe he played a lot in the water. That's why today is not there. <laughs> <laughs> a boat festival. Yeah, boat festival. That nice pictures I saw on WhatsApp status. Somebody what is putting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh... This, Madhuji, what is a boat festival or something? Madhuji, what is a boat? Boat festival. Boat festival. Boat festival. <laughs> Radha Govinda. The deities of Radha Govinda. They oh. are taken in the boat, at least in Dallas. It's uh, over here also. It's Radha Govinda. They are taken in the boat and they Noka Vihar, or it is a they are uh, opulently they are like they are decorated. The the if in India over here there's a small pond also, so they will put all the flowers and everything, and then they will take the deities for a ride in the boat. Just, yeah, a small um. Small yeah, a small boat. Let me uh, see. One, they will make small boat, yeah. Oh, like in my one second. Let me like see. Thing. One second. Just What's one second. Mute yourself. Yeah, let me see if I can okay. have it. Okay, maybe I'll send it into the group, okay? I'll send it into the group. Where am I? What is that, Mataji? Stop is that saying. a drag? Is that a dragon boat? It's a swan boat. Yeah, no, the boat festival over here is showing about the Kerala boat festival. Okay, okay, you're, you're seeing this, huh? So... Okay, now do we see this the life of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur? No. Yeah, now we do. Okay. So uh Monday for you today, right? So today what's the what's the importance of today's day? The Vinod Thakur's appearance day. The appearance day of Shri. Thakur's disappearance day. Mm, yeah, so we'll talk about the appearance day now. Okay. Yeah, we still have half an hour, right, Mataji? Like 50, okay, for 20 minutes. We have half an hour. 20 minutes we have. 436, right, okay. Balvet joined. Balvet joined? Okay, um... Uh... Balvinda, can you start reading this? Yes, Mataji. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, 1838-1914, is a promo prominent prominent preceptor. preceptor Acharya in our succession of spiritual masters and disciples. Coming from Lord Krishna, he was a pioneering spiritual Pioneering spiritual leader, a householder, a magistrate working in colonial India under the British rule, 
a prolific preacher, writer, and poet. He wrote volumes of books reintroducing the pure Re reintroducing reintroducing the pure teachings of Lord Chaitanya at a time when those teachings had practically became last. He composed hundreds of devotional songs, glorify Krishna to uplift the consciousness of suffering suffering people of this world. He corresponded with philosophers, theologians, 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 theologians leaders, school, scholars, scholars, and professors of his time and some books including the life and prescripts of lord chaitanya to the university libraries in forgiven countries planned. foreign countries what for for foreign, foreign countries foreign countries planting the seeds for worldwide movement of krishna consciousness bhakti we know Thakur discovered and ex excavated excavated the birth the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya along with his devoted wife, Bhagwati Devi. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's it. That's it. One, one. We'll oh. finish this part. Okay, so uh, as we are uh, we are talking about the appearance day about Bhakti Vinod Thakur, we'll see about his contribution or how uh, what all were his contribution towards Krishna consciousness and why we are so fortunate that we had such a um, a devoted a devotee so that we got all the you know the main the main what we over here is that Bhakti Vinod Thakur discovered and excavated excavation is what it when it is already there and then it has been just you know um you, you're trying to elaborate it more you're trying to find out the importance of that place more and then bring it out to everyone Okay, so he did not make it, but it was excavated. It was brought into notice to all of them. Okay, so Bhakti Vinod Thakur discovered and excavated the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. Okay, and was it like, okay, he was just a, just a devotee? No, if you see his achievements, he was a householder, a magistrate. Magistrate means he was into law. Magistrate working in colonial India under the British rule. At that time, they were the British who were ruling India. And he composed hundreds of devotional songs glorifying Krishna. So imagine a householder who was into a job and also he was spreading the Krishna consciousness not only in India, but he had written books and they were, they were sent to the foreign countries as well. So that Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord, it should not be only restricted to, uh, to India, right? It should be, uh, everybody should have the uh, importance, uh, everybody should know the importance of the holy name of the Lord, right? So this was his main, main, main contribution. Okay? Okay. Mm. Okay, I wanted you to... Okay. One second, okay. I'll just sit somebody else. Adwai, can you read this? Adwai, you can unmute yourself. Madhavi, I'll ask him if we can unmute. Yeah, because I think his mom, he needs his mom to unmute it. Okay, no worries. We'll have um, uh, Isha. Bhakti Siddhant Sarsvat. Okay. Isha, can you read this? All above Bhakti Vinod Thakur taught devotion to Krishna by his personal example. His life story. Excerpted below. Demonstrates a tremendous amount of courage, character, and perseverance in the face of of many difficulties and gives hope to those of us who may be wondering just how to find the time to serve Lord Sri Krishna. His holy names and his devotees in our 
Ever so busy lives. Very good. So one second. Okay, we'll go to the bunka again one more part. So that we'll understand exactly what his, uh, yeah. Isha, can you start reading from here? 1838, Shriya, Shriya Bhakti Bhunanath Thakur, who was named Kedarnath Dutta. Kedarnath Dutta by his parents was born in opulent, opulent circumstances in Briganath. Brig, Briganath. Birangara. Birangara. Ula Gamra, Ula Gamra, Ula Gram, Ula Gram in the district in the district of Nadia, Nadia, West Bengal. He was the seventh son of Raj Krishna Nanda Data, a great devotee of Lord Nityananda. He would be known as Daitya Daitya Kulera. Daitya Kubera Prelad. Prelad. Daitya Kulera. Daitya Kulera Prelad. Prelada. Prelada. Prelada in his, the family of non devotees became. Because. Vaishnavism. Oh, because. Vaishnav, Vaishnavism. Vaishnavism. The worship of Vishnu or Krishna was not very much respected his respected in his family. Very good. So just it was like how Prahlad Maharaj did not have the uh, very, um, you know, confirmative family who did allow him to do Vishnu Puja. So same way over here also this was the condition for Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Uh, Raya Prahlad? Yes, Mahaji. Can you read this? Is it possible for you to read this? Yes, Mahaji. His childhood was spent at the mansion of his maternal grandfather in Virangara. His environment at this time was very opulent. He got his elementary education at the primary school started by his grandmother. Later, he attended an English school in Krishnanagar started by the king of Nadia. He left that school when his older brother died of cholera. Now, at 19, 1849, wait, 1849, when he was 11 years old, his father passed away. Subsequently, the grant, the grant of land that had been conferred upon his grandmother changed owners and the family fell into poverty. Okay. One second, okay. Yeah, continue reading this. Okay. When he was Mataji, um yeah. okay, yeah, now I can see. When he was just twelve, his mother arranged the future marriage to the five year old daughter of Madhusudana Mitra Mah Mahasaya, a resident of Ranagata. Around this time, his uncle Kas Kasi Prasada Ghosh Mahasaya who had mastered English under the British education, schooled young Kedarnatha Datta at his home in Kolkata. Kasi Prasada was a central figure in the literary circles of his time, being the editor of the Hindu intelligencer. Kedarnatha assisted his uncle with selecting appropriate articles to publish in his work in the newspaper, studied his books, and frequented the public library. He later attended Calcutta Sindhu Charitable Institution High School. Very good. Thank you so much. So see, this it's not a very easy life for like, okay, he had an easy life, so he became a devotee. No. Like Bhakti Vinod Thakur, like in his early ages, he lost his father. And then he lost all the opulence also which he had. Okay, no doubt he was born into an opulent family. But then as the uh, his father passed away the the land which was given he it was also taken away okay so then he did not have such a very very uh, good uh, uh, childhood but still due to his uh, because he was very clever and he was into his uh, 
his uh, yeah when he got married it was kashi prasad ghosh who uh, got him and he uh, had him uh, complete his studies balavinda did you read okay uh, ryan can you read this Sri Mataji, in 1850, 1856, and at the age of 18, Kendra Nath, Kendra Nath, Kendra Nath, entered college it, it in calculated. In Calcutta? In Calcutta. And he started writing in seven, in, in, extensively. In, Extensively in English or Bengal, he he studied English literature and fought a speech making, making in person who they make big, a well known order or orator or orator in the Bistri British Parliament. Parliament between the years 1850, 1857 and 1858, he composed the two er, 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 English epic er, entitled of the Porator, er, which he planned it to complete in the 20 er, well, books. 12 books. These books describe about the poorest who met a life of poorest. Life of Boris, who meant Alexander the Great. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, one thing which I want you all to do is, whenever you all are reading, see to it that you are not skipping words. You are trying to read. Don't assume and read. See what the word is given and then read accordingly. Otherwise, what would happen is, your understanding, your comprehension... You know, as you go ahead in your classes, you will have comprehensions. And comprehension will be only useful if you are going to read it thoroughly. If you read skipping words, then you are comprehending like understanding of this para. Once you read it, you should be able to understand what you have read. If that is not possible, then that reading has no sense at all. If I ask you to read this and if I put up a two-liner question in this, you will not be able to answer anything. So when I when I read 1856, at the age of 18, Kedarnath Datta entered college in Calcutta. I can ask a question over here, which where, where was the college located? Calcutta. What was the age of Kedarnath Datta? 18. What was the year? So you have to understand whatever you are reading has to make sense. Remember, reading is not important. You have to comprehend it when you're reading it. Okay, I wanted main thing over here. We have another 10 minutes. Okay. Because this is all in detail about uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But I wanted you to understand his daily routine. That was one main thing which I wanted to emphasize in this. Because what we say is, see that we have so many things going on. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. But let me just tell you. I'm going to send this into the group. So as and when you find time, see to that you read it. Because this is the chronological events which are given. So we are not going into so much detail. I want to show you what his routine was. Okay. Mm, okay. Who is going to read this? Palvit? Harbol Palvit, are you there? Okay. Adya, are you there? Yes, Mantaji. Yeah, Adya, can you see over here the uh, the timings and uh, the schedule is written here. Can you read that? Very yes. cool, calm, slow. Yes. So, so like from the 7.30? No, his son. His oh, son, okay. Lalita Prasad. His son, Lalita Prasada, recalled the following about his father, Srila Bhakti Vinoda Thakura, including his daily schedule 7 30 to 8 p.m 
take rest. 10 p.m. rise, light oil lamp, right. 4 a.m. take rest. 4.30 rise, wash hands and face, chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Japa. 7. Write letters. 7.30 read. 8.30 receive guests or continue to read. 9.30 to 9.45 take rest. 9.45 morning bath, breakfast or half quart milk. Couple of chapatis, some fruits. 9.55 if you would go to court in carriage. So this 7.30 to 8 p.m. Okay, so evening he would take rest. Then he would start writing. He used to start his daily chores of writing, reading. And see over here. And then at 4 o'clock in the morning he used to rest. Again 4.30 for half an hour resting. Then again getting fresh enough, having his daily japa doing. And then again his whole chores or his whole uh, schedule was that write letters, read, whoever comes to meet, meet them. Again, take a little bit of rest. See, over here, just 15 or half an hour of rest. And then go to the court. And eating was also not okay. Like, okay, give me apple and prashadam. I'm so and so big person in this court. It was not like that. He was just having milk and some chapatis. And then he used to carry on with his work. We are not, uh, we are not trying to imitate these people over here. But just this gives us an insight of how dedicated or how devoted these all Vaishnavas were. And if we can take at least, you know, a fraction of thing from them, we can do a lot of improvement in our daily life, in our Krishna consciousness. See, he would wear coat and pants to coat with double sized tulsi neck beads and Vaishnava Tilak. He was very strong in his decisions. He would decide immediately. He did not allow any humbug in his court, no upstart, could stand before him. So it was not that, okay, if you're a devotee or humble, anybody could come and just say anything. He would shave his, uh, he would shave his head monthly. He never allowed harmonium in his Sankirtan, considering it a distraction. Okay, that's a personal choice for him. When, you, when we do it, uh, when we have over here, we have the harmonium also. Then we have, okay, Palvat is not answering. Raya Prahlad, from this 10 p.m., can you start over here again? Okay. Um, 10 p.m. Uh, ha wait, 10, oh, 10, 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. Court begins. Oh, okay. At 10 a.m., court begins. And at 1 o'clock p.m., court finished. He'd come home and bath and refresh. And at 2 p.m., he returned to office. 5 p.m. He translated works from Sanskrit to Bengali. Then he would um, take evening bath and meal of rice, couple of chapatis, half quart of milk. Right. So this was what he was his daily routine. And the main important thing over here is that he spoke Bengali, Sanskrit, English, Latin, Urdu, Persian and Oriya. He started writing books at the age of 12 and continued turning out a profuse number of volumes up until he departed from this world. So, this is very, 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 very important. Okay. Okay. Let me... Yeah. Let... Okay. So today being the appearance day of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, at least we can we can at least read from his achievements or we can read through whatever you know whatever the message was given by these all acharyas for us, and then only we can you know by reading about. See when we um, Guru Maharaj is always say that you have to always attend the you know uh, uh, as far as possible listen to the life of all our acharyas of all the vaishnavas great vaishnavas secondly it is that if you can attend the mon the programs at the temple when there is an appearance day it is always going to be purifying 
it's not that okay it is only my guru maharaj vyas puja so i go to the temple and attend the vyas puja no if you can attend the vyas puja for all the maharajas whichever are there are uh, you know celebrated in your temple see to it that you can go over there because that is a lot of purifying and it uh, boosts your um, devotional life so see to it as long as as much as you can go to the temple if the temple is near you can go you can chant and then you can get an inspiration to move ahead in your devotional life okay so whenever we have this vaishnava acharyas uh, appearances they are there it's like normally uh, till like till afternoon 12 you fast till uh, the mid morning and then you do your chanting and everything and then you read the glories of that vaishnava acharya so see to it that if you can go to the temple well and good otherwise at least you read through whatever is given about their life so that it we can be an inspiration for us okay anybody has any questions or anything you all are understanding what we are doing we are doing the bhagavatam right everybody is in track with it Hari bol, are we all sleeping? Balavrinda, Ryan, Raya Prahlad, Raghav, Palvit, Adya. I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> See, I'm reading, but I'm doing my slokas in Bhagavad Gita because I have some other time to read later. Yeah, we are done. We are done with the class as of now. Okay. So we'll meet tomorrow again. Everyone. वांचा कल्पत रूपे कृपा सिंधु पति पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम अनुकुटी वैष्णवृंद की जय शील प्रभुपाद की जय जय अग्रे सीता प्रीति माता जी की जय थैंक यू माता जी थैंक यू चिल्ड्रेन बाय बाय सी यू ऑल हरि बोल हरि बोल